about to get on some speed boats or jet skis or something. And beautiful Veradero with the boy. Hey guys, on this week's episode, we aren't talking about any specific sailboats like we usually do. We aren't doing an everything you need to know episode either. We're going to take you on a tour of a beautiful island in the Caribbean to show you what it's like, just in case you ever expect to go there. Now you may notice I haven't done an episode in two weeks because it was time for me to take a vacation and I knew I wanted to take a vacation as a father and son adventure because my son is almost 17 years old, he's got his license, and I know his life is going to get very, very busy very soon. We considered renting a car here in Canada and driving down the East Coast, visiting all the cool spots, landing in Miami, and then flying across to the Bahamas, specifically Georgetown, so that I could take him through all the cool places Lady K has been when she was out there cruising. But there was a problem with that plan. You see, you need a COVID test at the time, this was February, to go from Canada to the US. And then you need another COVID test to go from the US to the Bahamas. And then another COVID test to go from the Bahamas to the US. And then another COVID test to go from the US back to Canada. And because these tests, it was PCRs at the time, um, they can be really hard to find, especially in the Bahamas, and very expensive. So. We needed a different plan, something a lot more simple. So we took the easy way out. We decided to go to Cuba. It's one of those all expenses paid sort of trips that I've never done before in my whole life. Even in my 20s when all my friends were flying there all the time, I refused to go on one of these things because the first time I saw Blue Water, I needed it to be under my own power. I needed to leave Canada and sail myself to the islands to make it all a little bit more worth it, if that makes sense. Anyone could just jump on a plane and go, but I needed it to be some sort of major accomplishment in my life. Obviously, that finally happened when I took Lady K down there, so now I'm free to take the easy way. So we booked our trip, and we landed on March 3rd in beautiful Veradero, which is one of the largest resort areas in Cuba, and the beach was actually rated number two in the Traveler's Choice Awards in 2019. They do catamaran rum tours, they do coral snorkeling, they do deep sea fishing, jeep safaris, and even boat rentals. So for the first few days when we got there, we actually took a vacation. We laid by the beach, we laid by the pool, we were playing on the water slide. But after a few days, we ventured out and had some fun. And the first stop, some speed boats. Not allowed to race. You got the key, right? All right. Say 30 meters. Is this 30 meters? I don't know. No meters. You like our sunburns? So we're in uh, Veradera Beach in Cuba. And it's very hot. It's what, 30 degrees? Okay. This is 30 meters. Lady case, 10 meters. Three lady case? This is less than 30. That's my point of reference, is like, okay, it's 10 meters. Can we get up and go, or what? Oh yeah. Oh baby, go!
Now our speedboat day could have been calm waters on the ocean and sort of boring and I'm very thankful and so is my son that it didn't go that way. The ocean was super choppy and two of the boats actually broke down. Here's what happened next. The two speedboats you see in the videos, um, they're both tourist boats. So the one in front of us is a, a couple from Windsor, I think. And then there's our speedboat. And ahead of our two boats is a jet ski. And a jet ski is the tour guide. So he gives us instructions, stay this far apart, follow me in a straight line. And he rips out on the jet ski and we basically just chase him. Well, suddenly the jet ski died. And the other tourists, uh, he sort of flagged them down. So the other tourists pulled up, he threw them a line, and they towed him to the beach where he beached the jet ski, and then they went to rescue him off the beach. So while they were towing him into shore, and were miles from the marina, so I don't know what he was going to do with this jet ski, but as they're going to rescue him, our boat died. The GoPro freezes sometimes, the OS is going to shit. So funny story. Our engine just died, and his engine's dead. Welcome to Cuba! Here, come. Hey, actually, engine just died. Tour guide, his his is gone too. Well, <laughs> shit. neutral again. Come on. <laughs> so our engine's a little lumpy. Got it running again. These guys are just on the beach. Oh, it's an adventure? Our next journey away from the resort was an 11 hour Jeep safari adventure around Cuba that promised us snorkeling, more powerboat driving, visiting a ranch to ride horses and have lunch, and then a swim in an underground cave where the water is 22 meters deep. It's one of those blue hole things if you've ever been to something like that. And the Jeeps are not actually Jeeps, but they're really fun little Suzukis and they're all stick shift. Hey guys, uh, so it's like 6.30 in the morning. It's already like this outside. Uh, we are going on a Jeep adventure today, so we're gonna take you guys with us. And uh, it's like 11 hours, so it should be cool. Ready to go? This is as far as the seat goes back. <laughs> I feel very tall.
square. Hey guys, we are up in the mountains. There's like a little farm here that we stopped at and everybody's sort of buying stuff. And I don't know what this is, but I like it. No idea, but it's good. I don't know if I should drink it. Oh, it's yummy. They didn't say what was in it. Juice. Oh, pineapple something. Pineapple something? Yeah. What Look, there's that? little ducks and chickens. Is this I don't know who has to fix these cars but I do not want to be that person. We hit a bump so hard back there, the windshield wipers came on. It was hilarious. And yeah, I know my face is peeling. I got burned really bad the first day we were here, and now it's all like bad, bad. But look at this. See, I wasn't the only one the tunnel talked about. Oops. It was him. <laughs> Holy crap. Hmm? In between our adventures, of course, we were poolside or laying on the beach at a resort called Memories in Veradero. All of the people we met on our travels that were staying in other resorts um, and all the information we all put together by talking, we we deemed Memories as probably the very best one that you can stay at. Uh, it had three a la carte restaurants that were always open as opposed to like one a la carte that's open every other day. They had two pools, direct access to a massive beach, and they even had a water slide. And the Wi-Fi wasn't too bad. We had Wi-Fi in our room. If you're considering going to this beautiful country, there are a few things to consider, primary amongst which though is money, which you'd think it would be easy. You just bring cash and everything will be fine, but it's actually a lot more difficult that, than that, and let me explain. But before I do, Lady K Sailing is brought to you by patrons, people who give a couple of bucks an episode to keep this channel improving and make the whole thing possible. Thank you guys so much. Anyway, money in Cuba. Right now, for cash, they accept the Cuban peso, obviously. Not the old government peso, that's not a thing anymore, but they accept the Cuban peso, which isn't worth very much, or they accept the Canadian dollar. And the Canadian dollar does reign supreme. Just about anybody accepts it, and they actually prefer it. They, however, are starting to push away from cash entirely and push very strongly, and there's an interesting reason for that. While any sort of roadside stands that sell I don't know, fruits and vegetables or little trinkets and things, they're still all about the cash. Most shops that are sort of in an established building with power and internet, they will demand that you use a Visa card. And that's because of the way the markets are set up, how you buy things in Cuba, and they're just sort of getting to this. So there's two markets in Cuba for the Cubans to use. One market accepts pesos, and they sell all the main staples of life, your food, fruits and vegetables, things like that, what you need to live. The second market is what my son deemed the Cuba coin. It's sort of a bank-based or almost online money system. And I can't really remember what it's called, but we'll go with Cuba coin. So basically, the Cubans can go to the shop, buy their staples of life, and that's everything they should need. But luxury items, they have to use sort of a debit card and this new sort of currency, which is all controlled by the government. And... That's why they want you so badly to pay with your Visa card because it goes right into that government fund where they can buy the luxury items. It's all kind of confusing, but as a tourist, it is extremely critical that you bring a Visa card right now, Canadian Bank Visa. Otherwise, like us, we didn't bring one, you won't be able to buy very much. Although you don't really have to because it's sort of all-inclusive anyway. If you're thinking about visiting Cuba, 
honestly, you should. And if you do go take the Jeep adventure, I cannot stress that enough. It's an 11 hour day, it's a long day, but it, it's just so much fun and it flies by and you don't want it to end. Absolutely do go to this country. We did do a little bit of sailing. We were on a Hobie 15, but I did not film it because the GoPro that I brought is missing a little door so it's not waterproof anymore. I can't find the little door for the charging port on the side. But we did do some sailing. I just don't have any film of it. This episode is more to show you guys that Cuba is worth going to. It was 80, 85, 90 degrees every single day that we were there. It is absolutely wonderful. Try it out. That's it for this week, guys. Uh, thank you so much for watching. If you like this episode, please give it a thumbs up, and I'll see you guys next week. Mm -hmm.